What you see here is a uh, bayonet that went through the process of electrolysis to remove all the rust. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that with this particular piece or any piece that you wanna remove rust from. So what you have right now is something that was actually from World War II. I found it on my house and we're gonna use two products that are really simple. We're gonna use this sodium carbonate that you see here. Also, we're gonna use water and we're gonna do some electrolysis using a transformer designed for hobbies. This is not your regular battery charger transformer. Remember to buy something that is designed for hobbies. I found this one on Amazon. I'm gonna to try to leave you the link over there. So we're gonna get a good amount of that uh, sodium carbonate and we're gonna put it in warm water. And we're gonna use these pieces of rod over here. I connected four of them with a piece of copper. You can use only one if you want um, to create that, that, that type of two pole type of situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach uh, the two, you, you're gonna have two pieces, the neutral and the negative. The negative is the black one and we wanna attach that one to the piece that you wanna remove the rust from. The other one is gonna be attached to your sacrificial piece or these kind of pieces of uh, rod that I have over here. This is some sort of uh, construction rods but you can find anything that is made out of steel. Anyway, we wanna carefully connect this too and we wanna find this spot that is gonna give us the best opportunity to remove the rust and i'm going to show you in a moment if the piece that you're going to restore or remove the rust from is too close to the top uh, you can see that the effect is not going throughout the entire uh, blade in this case so you want to make sure that when you fasten that uh, negative pole you want to move it to uh like like i did over here to a place where you're going to see a lot more distribution of that electricity and the current and you can actually keep it there for a while. This type of transformer will turn on and off automatically so it won't overheat. And after a day, what happens is that you can see that the rust removes a lot. Now, I've done that with another piece and uh, other things and, and you know, a lot of more rust comes out. So in this particular case, we had a lot of rust but not as much as what you can find sometimes on the ocean or other pieces that have been uh, left on the elements for a long time. So, um, what we you want to do is use some gloves and remove with uh, some brushes the excess material from there. Now, I have a piece of wood over here on the handle, so uh, I may end up replacing that one, but you start seeing all the information of the blade as you start removing it. Remember that you don't want to submit your piece through a lot of banging, hitting, or use a lot of forces. What you wanna do is you wanna, if you have screws like I have over here, these flat screws and other elements, you wanna make sure that you put a little bit of a lubricant in it so you can actually move those pieces and um, remove them properly so you can reuse them back again. In this case, I found out that the nut that goes on the other side has some weird kinda key-like uh, shape. So I went ahead and uh, used a, an old flat screwdriver that I have and I turn it into some sort of a key that will hold that part on the other side. And just kind of using a bench, I can actually support it there and use a flat screwdriver on the top to remove that screw. It, it, it actually works. I mean, if you give it a try, because you remove a lot of the rust, uh, a lot of those, those screws will become loosened um, by that situation, right? So you want to make sure that you do it in the proper way and uh, you say before the restoration part, it's gonna look really, really cool. Now, um, like I said, I mean, this piece of wood over here is, is worn out, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And by finding that I have a little more rust over there, I'm just gonna put it for a couple of more hours, make sure that everything is, is removed, and that's it. So, um, this other section over here, this little clip is, is actually some sort of a screw with a spring inside and the little piece that comes on the other side excuse the lack of uh, knowledge on the terminology but this little support over here is the one that we click in uh, as you put your your rifle inside so after doing some polishing with all this just polishing i'm not scraping i'm not grinding polishing look at the difference of the blade i mean it's like night and day when you go through like 600 i use my my regular grinder but i use polishing discs not grinding this, polishing this, they start like 200, 400, 600, 800. And you can actually grab those pads and just kind of scrub the stuff on it and make it look the way it looks right here. So, um, like I said, 
I mean, because of the handle was all old and deteriorated, I went ahead and used some chestnut that I have at home, some planks, and I mimic those two pieces of the handle. Uh, if you want to be curious about a lot of the things that you find, you can actually do it as well. So it just takes a little bit of curiosity and you can replicate those things. In this case, I want to go ahead and give it a nice look. So I went ahead and uh, instead of just leaving it like that and, and putting some uh, sealer, I actually used some stain and I put a little bit of a stain on it just to kind of make it look a little nicer. So it looks, it looks really cool. Let it dry, apply a little bit of a sealer on top. And uh, after you know a couple of hours, you're good to go. You can uh, install it back again. But uh, this thing, now that all the screws are nice and fine, you can screw them easily, is, is a beautiful restore piece. Uh, I can't wait to do a whole bunch of them. I have some uh, swords that I can actually work with, and I would love you to see all the process as well, but you can do it. I mean, this is how I did it. Remember that that transformer is the one that you wanna buy that is for hobbies. Don't get transformers that are for charging batteries. I tried like seven of them and it was a failure for me because they are designed for a different purpose. So in this case, uh, look how nice it looks like. Obviously adding a little bit of lubricant to your, 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 your metals and, and you know, uh, springs and moving parts is good and the entire blade should be kind of clean with that so it will avoid a lot of the rust and obviously keep whatever you restore in a nice dry you know clean place so so it will last for a long time with all that sheen and all that beauty and you know that you can actually just give it back again a buff and it will look nice and shiny again and this this process is really satisfying and i'm glad that you were able to see it so now uh i i will um invite you to subscribe to my channel Hit that little notification bell. You will see a lot of my videos in English and in Spanish whenever it's possible. I found out that this one was made on 1943 uh, by the British for the Indian colony uh, to fight the Nazis. So it's, it's a really nice piece of history that I want to keep over here. And if necessary, obviously donate it to a nice museum so they can keep it for longer generations. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Uh, hit that little notification bell and comment if you have any questions about the process. Bye bye.